and that's where you're going to put the injection. So you're going to take your needle and you're going to actually go to the either to the right or to the left of the spine, and you're going to put it right into the muscle like this. It doesn't hurt them. It's it's a very small pin, and you're just going to push it in. What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. Today, we are going into the snake room. We're gonna take a look at a couple things. I had to feed some frozen thawed, but I'm gonna also show you how to administer antibiotics if your snakes are sick, if they have a respiratory infection, if they have some kind of like a mouth infection, or they got bit, maybe, and that got infected. Sometimes I have I had some blue tongue skinks that happened to once. One of the males bit the females, or vice versa, and I had to give them some uh, antibiotics for that. And the antibiotics are pretty much the same. So we're gonna we're gonna go over the antibiotics and how you administer those, which ones are the best ones, and don't let anyone else out there tell you that hey, we never get respiratory tract infections in our collection. They're full of it, full of baloney. Everyone gets them because this is the time of year. Breeding year, breeding season uh, is very stressful to the animals and it suppresses their immune system a little bit and, and that's why they become more prone usually. It could be also the weather, when it gets cooler, you drop temps a little bit, even if, you, I don't drop my, my hotspot temps, but just the ambient room temps can also do that. But I, I think it's breeding is very stressful for these, uh, especially the males. And uh, sometimes the females go off feed too and they, and they get stressed out and then they, they get respiratory. So it happens, okay? You're gonna get them invariably. You have to know how to treat them because why do you wanna lose a snake that you don't need to lose? And to be honest with you, despite what people say, they're re it's really not that contagious. Meaning that if you have a tub that has a snake with a, with a respiratory, doesn't mean the tub next to it's gonna get the respiratory. Now, if you have a male in with a female and one of them has a respiratory and they're in the same tub together, Yes, probably I would treat both, even if you don't see symptoms in one, because they're right next to each other and they're laying on each other and the, the mucus is on top of each other. They're drinking from the same water bowl, different story, but you don't have to, it's not like a plague where if one has them, the whole collection is gonna get them. I think that's also a big misnomer a lot of people say. Uh, so let, let's go inside. I'm gonna show you the antibiotics and, and what to do. Now that's a lock of locks. As Pablo said, we've been waiting to see this thing. This is a really nice one. This is our Coral Glow Mandarin Sugar Pastel, probably, more than likely, being bred by our Mandarin male. I produced this female a couple years ago, a while ago, 18. And I, when I bred my Mandarin male with a Coral Glow pastel sugar, and we produced this girl, and she's been spectacular. You can see all those crazy oranges. She's also got paradoxing in her too, which is kind of cool. That's independent of the banana. She was born with that paradox. But look, look at the Mandarin in there. The Mandarin and sugar real work really, really well together, and. I wanted to see what the super form of that looked like. Super Mandarin banana sugars. So we could potentially be doing it here. Let me leave her alone. She seems to get, be getting a little spooked. All right, guys. I know I kind of teased this a little bit in the beginning of the video. I want to show you what to do when a snake has a respiratory tract infection or any kind of infection in its body. It could have like mouth like rot or some kind of, you know, uh, injury to its body where maybe it was bit by something. Uh, like I was mentioning earlier, blue tongue skinks, sometimes when they, when they mate, they will bite each other and they'll cause an, uh, an, some kind of a wound that gets infected, and you gotta treat this aggressively. There's two antibiotics that you have to be concerned about, okay? One that treats what we call gram-positive bacteria and one that treats gram-negative bacteria. So there's basically two types of infections, gram-negative based bacteria, gram-positive based bacteria. And the good thing is that there's two antibiotics that are the best antibiotics out there, one that treats mostly gram-negative and one that treats gram-positive. And usually the old, I guess you could say, way you did things was your snake got sick, you brought it to the vet, they swabbed the animal's mouth. If it had a respiratory, they, they cultured it. They said, oh, it's a gram-negative bacteria. You treat with a gram-negative um, antibiotic like Batril or Enterofloxacin, which is the same drug. And you would treat it and that would be the end of it. But then people found sometimes you would treat that animal and then all of a sudden, like 
a couple weeks later, it would get it would get another respiratory tract infection. And what they found was that sometimes most infections, especially in the lungs of snakes, can be both gram negative and gram positive at the same time. Usually, it's predominantly one or the other. Uh, so when they culture, they only really get the the big one, the one that's the most prevalent. And then they miss the gram positive, and then so you kill off all the gram negative bacteria, and then the gram positive start growing. So a better way to treat respiratories, which I've been doing for a number of years now, is treat with a gram negative and gram positive bacteria uh, antibiotic at the same time, so you knock out both. Big, and this way you don't even need to go to the vet. If you have if you have a lot of snakes, it'll be way too expensive every time you get a respiratory to go to the vet. It's good to have antibiotics on hand if you have a good relationship with your vet, and they'll sell you the antibiotics like mine will because he knows I have a thousand snakes, uh, I always have it, you know, in the refrigerator ready to go. Now, what are the antibiotics? Okay, the antibiotics, this is one of them. This is known as Batril. This is a different brand of Batril, but it's called, the, the chemical generic name is known as Enterofloxacin. This treats gram-negative bacteria, okay? This bottle comes usually pre, they're all pre-mixed, the Batril, so you don't have to do any mixing. And you basically, what you're going to need to get is some, some insulin syringes. And the good thing about insolence about syringes now is you can buy them on amazon.com really cheap if you if you live in the right state i guess this is a one ml or one cc insulin pin and they're it's divided up and graded in 10 so 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 all right with a bottle of batril standard batril okay every little 10 units on this little insulin pin will treat a thousand grams of a snake so if your snake is a thousand gram you're going to give it 10 little units of, the, of this Batril, um, and you're going to do it, they say every other day, but you can do it three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I find that works really well, it's pretty easy. I'm going to show you where you're going to inject the snake in a minute, because I do have a snake that I'm currently treating, so we'll get to that in a minute, but this is the, how you measure things. Now, when we talk about the gram-positive uh, bacteria, we use a drug known as ceftazidime, sometimes it's, you know, the, the common name is Fortaz, okay, but ceftazidime is the uh, the chemical name of it that they give to this the drug. This works really well. And both of these drugs have virtually no side effects, which is really good. And that's what you want. Now, these come as powders. So depending on, sometimes they come as one gram or, of powder, and sometimes they come as two grams of powder. You can put um, 10 mLs of water into the one gram powder. And you, what you'd need to do is you need to give, instead of 10, you would want to give 20 on this little insulin syringe for every uh, 1,000 gram animal. So if you have a 1,000 gram animal, you're gonna give 20 of this and you're gonna give 10 of the other one. Um, I mix them in the same syringe. You can do that or you can do them separately. That's up to you. Usually um, with uh, Fortaz or Septazidine, they say this can be given every third day. Usually it's Batril's every other day. So I just do them every third day, usually together. Maybe when I first start treating, I might do every other day just for the first like one or two shots, and then I'll go to every third day. So I go to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if I remember, hopefully. You know, you got to really mark your calendar. You got to mark which snakes are being treated because you don't want to forget that you're treating these snakes. All right, now it's pretty easy. Once again, you just basically open the syringe up, you take the top off, you put this in the, in the stopper, you, you draw out what you want. In this case, we want, um, I'm treating a bigger steak, so we're gonna draw a 20 on this one. Okay, and then with this one, I'm, I'm drawing out 22 because it's a bigger snake. And what I usually do is I'll take this and I'm gonna go inside, but I'm gonna, for this purpose, I'm gonna bring the snake out here so I can show you how to inject it. Okay, so here's my bull python that I've been treating uh, for a respiratory. She has been getting a little bit. You could actually see a little bit of the mucus on her right here. Oops, she doesn't want to show you, but believe me, I just got some mucus on my fingers. So she's definitely still got some some snottiness up to her. And that's going to make it hard for the snake to breathe because think about what's going on with the lungs in a snake. It's really stretched out and elongated. So if, And they only really have one functional lung. So if that lung fills up with fluid, they can't breathe. And if they can't breathe, they die. So you don't want to, you don't want to let that happen. Now, what you want to do is you want to take the animal... And you want to get the, the, like the first third of the animal. So this first part of the animal. And you find the spine, which is pretty easy. And then on each side of the spine, there's a lot of muscle here. This is a lot of a nice little thick layer of muscle here. And that's where you're going to put the injection. So you're going to take your needle and you're going to actually go to the either to the right or to the left of the spine. And you're going to put it right into the muscle like this. It doesn't hurt them. It's, it's a very small pin and you're just going to push it in. All right. And 
that's it. It's that simple. You don't have to rub it. You don't have to do anything. Sometimes they get a little, you know, they, they, they get a little nasty when you inject them. They don't like the way it feels. If you give a good shot, a lot of times they're fine. I'm going to put the snake back in. I'm going to make sure it's got enough heat. Always check your heat. Make sure it's, it's you've got a nice warm hot spot, at least 90 degrees. Some people believe in raising that hot spot up even a little hotter. Um, the, I just let the antibiotics do their thing. The antibiotics will kill the bacteria. The snake knows to sit on the hot spot so its immune system is optim uh, optimally working and it can defeat this uh, respiratory tract infection. Like I said, when they go into a shed cycle and shed, usually that's when they're, they, they're better and they'll start eating after that. And if not, sometimes you have to do an, an, another course of antibiotics. Sometimes you have to treat them for a long period of time. This snake, actually, I've been treating for four weeks now, so and she's still not 100% better, but she was really snotty. So we just missed her because she was under the hide box a lot and we just hadn't taken her out. And one day we took her out, we were wondering, she hadn't eaten in two weeks in a row. Usually if they stop eating, you know, that you always want to make sure you inspect them to make sure that there's nothing wrong with them. And, and Pablo and I just noticed she had bubbles coming out of her nose. Also, you can sometimes squeeze their head a little bit. If you squeeze their head a little bit and you see bubbles or any kind of snot coming out of their nose, that also will tell you that there's a respiratory. You'll know, you'll hear them gurgling a little bit when they breathe. Her, she's really breathing better, a lot better now than she was uh, because she was really gurgling. When they gurgle, gurgle, gurgle a lot, that means that they have a pretty good respiratory. Once they stop making all those gurgling sounds, you got to keep treating them, though, because you don't want to miss some of the bacteria, and then it grows back again. Once again, the two-antibiotic approach is the way to go. Ceftazidine, enterofloxacin, also known as Fortaz, and Batril, but not always, so that's why I'm giving you the generic name as well. Talk to your vet, get a bottle of each, have them in your house. I always have some in the refrigerator just in case we get a respiratory. Because just when you think your snakes are doing great, out of nowhere, you're gonna get a respiratory. It happens all the time. Don't get upset. Don't feel like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I have to kill the snake, I gotta put it in the freezer. Because there are people, they just put their snakes in the freezer if they get respiratory. That's not what you should do. Animals need to be treated, they deserve to be treated, they get sick just like humans do. Your dog gets sick, you bring it to the vet, you treat it, same thing with your snakes. It's all about knowledge. Hopefully this video helped you and hopefully this advice will help you. Good luck. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. I hope uh, this video was uh, informative for you. I hope you uh, understand that, you know, if you have a lot of animals and you breed animals, they're gonna get sick and you have to know how to treat them. And it's silly to think that no one else gets respiratories and that you're the only one and that you're doing something wrong. You can do everything right and you can still get a snake that gets sick. It just happens. I had an olive python that was outside that was rubbing its nose against the, the, the grating and it got an infection. What was it gonna do? I gotta treat it with antibiotics. And you have to treat with two different antibiotics because you never know with snakes, especially in respiratory tract infections, a lot of times you can take your snake to the vet, they can culture it, they can tell you it's gram negative bacteria. You can treat with Batril and then a week later, or it's probably take a few weeks of treatment, Three weeks later, you can it could still have an infection because it could have been a small, small amount of gram-positive bacteria in there as well that didn't get cultured. And then when the gram-negative was destroyed, that gram-positive started growing. So that's why I always treat with Batril and um, uh, Ceftazidine, which is the, it treats the gram-positive, the Batril treats the gram-negative. It's easy, just do it. You treat, I usually treat for at least two to three weeks and or until they go into shed. Once they go into a shed cycle, usually you're pretty good. That usually means they're over it and they're shedding their skin and they're gonna now start you know, eating and, and feeling better. So sometimes you have to treat a long time. Remember, snakes have a slow metabolism. So these antibiotics don't work like in people. You take it for two weeks and you're done. Sometimes you need to do four, five, six weeks of stuff. But just be consistent with your injection. Sometimes I forget, which, you know, which is not good. But the good thing is that snakes do have a slow metabolism. So you can give a shot and it can last a couple days in their body. You know, Once again, they usually say Batril every other day, uh, Ceftazidine every third day. But if you went every third day with both of them, that would be fine. I usually do, th I'll do three times a week, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I find that that works no problem. So don't be afraid. If you have animals, they're gonna get sick. You gotta treat them, you gotta be smart. Hopefully this video helped you. If you like what you're seeing, make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit that bell, turn on those notifications, and I'll see you back tomorrow morning.